Pep, what's going on, Pep? Guys, we made it. We're finally here. The NFL kicks off tonight, and what a great, juicy matchup we have on Thursday Night Football. But man, listen, the whole NFL offseason, we're talking NFL, just getting ready for the season, but we're finally here for some real games. And guys, tonight, it's your Super Bowl champion, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and a quarterback named Tom Brady going up against, quote-unquote, America's team, right, and the return of Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys. Listen, the NFL, they are not a bunch of fools. They put on a real juicy matchup to get things going to, for the NFL season tonight. And I think there's going to be a lot of eyeballs on tonight's game. Absolutely. It is kind of weird, though. I mean, you'd think that maybe they would do a team that did a little bit better than the Cowboys. I understand <laughs> that the Cowboys are a huge draw, but it's not like, should they be facing off against a defending champion right off the bat? I mean, especially on the showcase night of the start of the season, this is the biggest point spread in Vegas for the weekend. So they think this is going to be the most lopsided game of the weekend. Okay. Yeah, you know, usually it's like a, a rematch of the, like the AFC Championship game or the NFC yes. Championship game. So may, if you were thinking maybe it was going to be, I don't know, Tampa Bay against like Green Bay, you know, or something like that, or like in years past, like awesome. Kansas City against New England or something like that. But yeah, they stuck Dallas in there, right? Because it's the Cowboys. And they got a huge following everywhere, including here in the Inland Empire. So they figure, well... If you put the Cowboys and you add Tom Brady, that thing's going to go, you know, it's going to blow the roof off. They're going to love this game. It's going to move the meter. They're coming <laughs> off of their hard knocks hype. Yeah, the Cowboys hype is at an all-time high right now. But it always is, right? Like, it always is before every year. Like, man, this team is really good. It's like, dude, you guys have not – I mean, the Tony Romo teams were okay, right? They're – playoff caliber but not since the you know the triplets the dallas cowboys of the 90s were they really really good right we when they became america's team pep how do you think this game turns out listen I, i've said this before like you know like a salmon trying to swim upstream i, I am not <laughs> going to go against the grain and, and fight against all these tom brady haters listen tom brady's the goat he proved it again last year. He's old. I get that. But they've got a really good team in Tampa Bay beyond Tom Brady. So, yeah, I got I got the Bucks tonight. What do you guys say? 40? I think Bucks easily walk away with this one. I'm going to go a little anti here, <laughs> and I'll tell you why. I am a believer in their new defensive coordinator, Dan Quinn. He's the one who engineered the Legion of Boom for me. So this may be me betting on emotion, if you will. But I think the Cowboys defense is going to be a lot better. And maybe Micah Parsons can get to Tom Brady and make him tap dance a little bit. And the Cowboys shock the world and beat the Bucks. Well, I will say this. We have the, the pride of Cajon High School. DeMonte Casey, he is a new defensive back. Will probably start at safety. If, if not, he will see playing time uh, for the Dallas Cowboys. So if if something's going to happen on the Dallas side uh, on defense, let's hope it's DeMonte Casey. Maybe, maybe picking off Tom Brady tonight. Who knows? The real question is, with two offensive linemen being out, does Dak Prescott even make it to the end of this game oh, tonight? God. So if he stays healthy, that's the key. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's another great point, right? Like, there's so many question marks on, you know, Dak Prescott's health. Is, is his ankle really 100%? Is he going to be super mobile? Can he do all the things that he used to do? Oh, yeah, and on top of, like, his best offense lineman will not be out there. So get ready to run for your life tonight against a right. very good Tampa Bay defense. Right. So Thursday Night Football, it's back, guys. We're excited about it. Uh, this weekend, here's a couple of our local teams that are matchups. So we got the Bears taking on the Rams. That is Sunday Night Football. That is SoFi Stadium. Um, Andrew Dalton should be QB1, I guess they would say, for the, the Chicago Bears. And on the flip side, of course, it's the de debut of Matt Stafford, finally, as the starting quarterback for the Rams. Or you will get to see how Stafford looks. I mean, I think a lot of people are really thinking of how good the Rams could be this year. And a big part of that is we haven't seen them with Stafford yet. Yeah. But they are one of the top four teams favored to win the Super Bowl. I mean, I think they are going to be very good. They have a lot of offensive weapons for him to get the ball to. Rams are going to be a fun team to watch. Plus, you have Aaron Donald on the defensive line, who yeah. is probably going to win the defensive MVP again. Pep, we know Stafford has the physical ability to do it. But will he be able to do it? Because obviously, now he's surrounded by an actual team for the first time in his life. Yeah, he was just one of those guys that, you know, was su a super good player, 
but on a bad team. So it's like, well, how good is he? If you actually put him on a playoff team, would he be like the best quarterback in the league? Is he like Tom Brady, but he was just buried in Detroit with the Lions? You know, so we're going to find out pretty quick. But yeah, you guys are right. On paper, at least, with all this talent on offense and defense, the Rams look like a serious Super Bowl contender. Problem is, you just got to get out of the NFC West. The NFC West is going to be tough once again. So many good teams, top to bottom. So it's, it's going to be tough this year for the Rams. And they're going to finally get to showcase SoFi Stadium Sunday Night Football with fans in it. So yeah. that'll be fun to see, too. That yeah. part will be really cool. Finally, you know, we had some preseason action, but finally a real game, Sunday Night Football. Right. So that's that's a big one in prime time. Uh, we got the Chargers on the road at the Washington football team uh, as they kick off their season. And, and the Monday Night Football game, if you guys want to look all the way to Monday, uh, Ravens and Raiders. And again, Raiders being in Las Vegas, fans in the stands, uh, the new black hole, right? So uh, and that, that's going to be a tough matchup for the Raiders as they take on uh, Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. I'm super pumped because I hate Mondays, and the only things that makes Mondays better is Monday night football. So here we go. We get the big Roomba in the desert finally get to see what that's like filled with fans, too. All these new stadiums that were just empty last year. God, I know, cool. I know. Finally, finally we get to see them packed. Finally we get to see some real games. And, and Patrick, you're right, man. Our reward for getting through the weekend and, and getting to Monday is like, okay, get through Monday, and you're going to have Monday Night Football at the end of your day. You get off work, you go home, and you get to watch the Raiders take on the Ravens uh, on Monday Night Football. So we got some good matchups this weekend uh, across the NFL. I did want to touch, guys, uh, on a little bit of college football. Um, UCLA, the huge win against LSU, and now the, mm. the new AP coaches poll has come out, and the Bruins shoot up all the way to number 16 in wow. the nation by beating the LSU Tigers 38-27 this past weekend in the Rose Bowl. And and guys, you probably saw it. You know, Coach Ogeron at LSU, the former USC coach, saying sissy blue uh, about UCLA. And they've kind of used that as their battle cry now. The sissy blue color of UCLA. I kind of like how they just took it and said, <laughs> yeah, cool. We are sissy blue. Let's kick everyone's ass. Yeah, it's kind of hard to call them sissy blue when they're stomping you in the mouth at the same time. Yep. So uh, here comes ASU, right? So UCLA, we'll see if they can keep it going. Yeah, so U UCLA has a, a bye this week. And then, yeah, and then back in action against ASU. And, and for USC, wow. you know, they did, again, they did what they're supposed to do. They beat a, a good San Jose State team. But now the, the stakes are raised because it's a Pac-12 game already. Second week of the season, already in the conference play. They're going to take on Stanford. And guys, here's the thing about Stanford. The Cardinal will start Tanner McKee at quarterback. And Tanner McKee is the former starting quarterback at Centennial High School. He hey. went off on a two-year Mormon mission. He's back. He's now the starting quarterback. And we'll see if he can light it up against USC. He split time in, the, in Stanford's opening loss against Kansas State last Saturday. But now he's the guy. They gave him the keys to the car and said, okay, Tanner McKee, you are our guy now. He is a holier man now. Now he gets the start at Stanford. I love it. That's cool. We get to see how they do. <laughs> yeah, there's and, and I know uh, Forty appreciates these Centennial guys all over the place. Yes. And, and I literally mean they're all over the place, college football and NFL. <laughs> yeah, they like tweeted out a thing uh, last week that showed all their active players in college football, and the list is huge. Yeah, Centennial to college football is like Alabama to the NFL. They're everywhere. It seems like yeah. It. yeah, they are everywhere. Matt Logan does such a fantastic job out there. And again, guys, finally, uh, just a quick baseball note here because we aren't coming down the home stretch of the regular season. The Dodgers still trying to chase down the Giants. Just seem to be nipping on their heels like they're right there. Uh, but help could be on the way. Clayton Kershaw making a rehab start in Oklahoma City. I was hoping it was going to be Rancho Cucamonga. It wasn't. They sent him to Oklahoma City instead. Oh. But he's looking good, and he could return to the Dodgers as early as Monday. Um, so if they get their full complement of healthy pitchers, they, they might chase down San Francisco. They just might do it. So here we go with the Dodgers starting to make their run. Yeah, I mean, the time is now. Get yourself, my bad. They are running out of time. So the Dodgers uh, <laughs> need to do it now. Yep, tell me how to get your stuff. It's Inland Sports, like Inland Empire. Inland Sports, all over social media. We got the Inland Sports YouTube channel, talking a lot of fo local football, including our Centennial guys who are in college and NFL. So check it out, Inland Sports. Before we let you go, Pep, we got to go around the horn here. Super Bowl predictions on day one of the NFL. 
What are you uh, thinking? I'll go with Tampa. You no, know, this is going to sound dumb. Tampa Bay in the NFC, Kansas City in the AFC. I know you've heard this before, but yeah. <laughs> it's hard to go against that one, yes. right? I'm similar. I think I'm going to go Tampa Bay, NFC, but I think I'm going to go to the shocker Buffalo Bills. Oh. AFC. <laughs> I'm going to say Buffalo Bills, Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> of course you would. <laughs> 